ceiling uh, and, and helping decision makers uh, along the way to make, you know, the, the, the right decision uh, for technology and to keep your business going. Um, today's focus is security. Uh, as technology continues to blend, you know, cloud and prem, as well as, you know, company assets versus bring your own device and just an ever increasing exposure to, to threats, you know, that, that has become a large part of our focus here at Integrated IT Group is making sure that the decision makers are informed, um, you know, that they're, not, that they're not missing anything, that they're not, you know, that nothing is flying under the radar, but also that they're aware uh, and, and, you know, able to put together the right pieces and parts of their, of their environment to help them, you know, continue to grow their business, but also protect. Um, we've been a partner with Sophos for many years now. Uh, their innovation continue, continues to impress, you know, us, continues to impress our customers. Uh, we see, you know, constant improvement with their, with their product line. Uh, constant innovation, um, and anywhere that we have it in there, we, we've just seen, you know, nothing but good things. We, we um, commonly rip and replace and, and immediately have, you know, successful feedback from, from the customers themselves saying, you know, why didn't we do this before? Um, so, uh, you know, just a, a quick note on Sophos, you know, their, their, um, their, their security, um, the simplicity in terms of, of deployment and management, um, their insight, you know, reporting uh, to let you know what's happening, when, where, and how, you know, it's just, it's an altogether great solution for, for small, medium, and large businesses. Uh, it's, it's a well-rounded solution. Um, and part of some of the topics today are going to be how, how they link together the endpoint uh, security with your uh, core and infrastructure security with, you know, the, the, the internet security, you know, all your users out there in the cloud. So, um, I believe we're going to hand it over to Scott Roberts to lead the rest of the conversation. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Scott, um, Scott Roberts. I've, uh, I've been with Sophos for uh, getting close to a year at this point. You know, prior to that, I was with uh, Fortinet, spent a lot of time with uh, large commercial enterprise firewalls in that space. And before that, I spent... Uh, most of my career, 20 plus years in the in the infrastructure space as a as an IT consultant. So I've uh, played with a lot of toys along the way. You know, even as a VAR for uh, oh gosh, you know, 15 plus years. You know, Sophos was a key component of the offering we had out there. So I've been exposed to the product for a long time. So anyway, um, again, thanks everyone for your time today. You know, kind of how I'm going to start off a little bit is, you know, I guess, first of all, you know, let me introduce you to, you know, your account manager in the area, Steve Noggle. I think Steve is uh, actually on the line as well. You know, he is, uh, he's my better half. He's your, uh, he's your account manager and uh, he's uh, paired with me, you know, in the Northern Ohio area. So anyway, um, kind of my goal today is to, I guess I'm going to start out by talking about, you know, just kind of how, you know, we see the threat landscape evolving and how that is impacting the tools that are available to you and, you know, how we are trying to solve that problem for you. And, you know, feel free to interrupt me, um, ask questions along the way, you know, just uh, if I'm not clear on something, you know, point that out. So I'm going to start with just kind of an overview of what we're doing, dig a little deeper into, you know, our core landscape and then kind of take you through a little bit, get a little bit more visual on, you know, the offerings, you know, is, a lot, you know, assuming uh, time still allows, you know, beyond that, I mean, we can schedule one-on-ones and I can take you as deep as you'd like to get. So anyway, again, you know, uh, here we go. Assuming, there we go. Um, so, so folks, just quickly, I mean, we've been around for a long time, about 33, 34 years. Originally based out of the UK, more and more based out of Boston and, you know, the uh, Silicon Valley area. You know, currently we have around 3,300 employees and, you know, right now we're just uh, slightly under a billion dollars in annual revenue. So we've been, we've been growing for a long time. We've been doing this for a long time. So just uh, kind of the landscape along the way, you know, as we've been building it out, you know, we've done a number of acquisitions as we've built that into you know, the product portfolio just to make it stronger. You know, our latest our latest acquisition was a DARPA contracted company named Invincia in early 2017. And that became, became the, 
the core behind our, our next generation endpoint product, which, you know, we classify as intercept X and, you know, we'll get, we'll get more into that along the way. So uh, geographically, you know, we're everywhere just to kind of give you an idea, you know, we're, we kind of follow the sun with everything we do. So we've got offices completely around the world, whether they're support centers or operation centers or development centers, you know, we've, uh, we're very global at this point. Just kind of our mission statement is, you know, security made simple is our tagline. And our goal is to build that into pretty much everything we do. You know, I mean, let, let's, let's be honest, guys. I mean, you know, we have a lot of tools available to us in our industry anymore. The landscape is very, very complex. You know, nobody has enough time to be an expert at everything. I mean, unless you're very, very lucky, none of us are wearing one hat and we're all hoping that, you know, the, the tools that we procure actually make our lives better, you know, not more complicated and take additional time away from our family. So that's something that we, factor into everything we do is we're trying to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. We're trying to provide you resources and tools that make your job better and more efficient and, you know, funnel down to, you know, the actionable Intel that you actually need, not just the absolute abundance of noise that you know, we can collect, you know, through our seams and our logging reporting and all of our different third party engines and everything else that we have to try to aggregate and, you know, hope it provides us something that actually makes sense to us. Um, industry likes us, you know, Gartner, you know, we crushed it this year. You know, we are the endpoint leader in the magic quadrant, you know, Forrester likes us. I mean, it's just, you know, real quick. I mean, you know, we've been, uh, you know, kicking butt and taking names as we've been developing our technology out in the industry and, you know, we continue to lead the space. You know, this was a report that was done in March, you know, MRG Efitas. You know, you can see us on the far left-hand side, you know, just how we're scoring compared to our competition. Um, you know, even more so with, you know, our exploit protection uh, results. And, you know, the latest one that was actually April through June of this year, SE Labs Enterprise Endpoint, you can see that, you know, we pretty much had close to a 100%, you know, catch rate with uh, – you know, very little failure points in between. And this is one that we're really, really proud of. SE Labs, if you're not aware, they're probably the premier endpoint tester out there. They're a no-nonsense kind of shop where it is what it is. You know, they do it their way. And uh, we're, we're very happy to, you know, have uh, been so successful with that as, we, as we've been. And just kind of on that line, I mean, I know every manufacturer has kind of got – you know, yes, we're the latest and greatest and we're the best at everything. And you guys are kind of tired of hearing that. And, you know, there's some truth to that. So one of the things that we're one of the founding partners in is an open source organization that is focusing on the standardization of endpoint testing and, you know, threat point identification and remediation technologies. So we take it very seriously. So we're very active in that community trying to develop out a standardization. That way it's not just, you know, us against somebody else and no one's helping each other. And, you know, my way is better than yours and all that stuff nobody wants to hear about anyway. So um, last but not least here, you know, as far as vendor landscape, you know, with all of the different vendors, you know, we've been classified as, you know, the leader, a leader in, all of the different primary areas, both from an endpoint perspective, you know, and that network perspective where we've got the edge or core appliance, that's your, your firewall, basically your UTM, your next gen, and in this synchronized security component, which is, be, is becoming very, very important. You guys are seeing in the industry and across a, a lot of these vendors where everyone's kind of trying to acquire or build or buy or partner with a solid endpoint, there's a reason for that. Um, bottom line, you know, I mean, there, there's only so much intel you can gather at the network level. You know, things just don't, don't survive MAC address or layer three. You know, there's issues there. There's only so much the endpoint can deliver. But when you tie the two together in a, uh, with a good relationship between them, the intel that 
is delivered out of that is, is exponentially greater. It's not just twice as much. I mean, it, it's so much more. And there's so much more you can get out of that with a minimal amount of network complexity if you do it right. And I'll dig into that a little bit. I mean, you know, everyone's talking about, well, you know, SSL security and SSL decrypt and, you know, that all sounds great and it works great. And yes, it's, it's quite valid. There are very much reasons why you want to do that, but it's not as easy as everyone tries to make it. So we're trying to provide you some better options to get visibility into your, into your network without necessarily introducing complexity or um, a negative user experience when browsers aren't working properly. And you guys understand the rest of that. So, so kind of what I want to talk about right now is what we classify is as synchronized security. And again, that's the culmination of what our endpoint and our XG firewall and central, which is our core platform, provide you. Interceptx is our next generation endpoint. Um, layers, on, layers on top of our traditional endpoint and, um, you know, you know, provides all of that, you know, next generation ransom oriented cryptoware, white guard, credential threat, threat, credential theft protection, all of that layered security for you. And XG firewall is your edge or your synchronized security appliance in your network that's operating as a traditional firewall or a segmentation firewall. Um, and central's our platform. Central is AWS hosted, 100% hosted, geographically dispersed. Um, everything relays through central. You know, we are migrating all of our core offering to that hosted platform. We still have products that run 100% um, on-prem for you. If that's a model that makes the most amount of sense for you, but you're gonna find the industry as a whole is starting to move more this direction. And there's, there's reasons for that. A lot of it has to do with, you know, just the ability to deploy feature sets as quickly as possible. This is a, this is an industry that's obviously changing very, very quickly. So trying to manage those maintenance windows to keep everything updated as aggressively as you need to in order to protect your assets is very, very hard. So that's what central is. So, you know, this, the problems that we're seeing industry in the industry, and uh, I'm assuming, you know, most of this is very apparent to you. I mean, you know, you have that total lack of visibility with your firewalls. I mean, you're logging into your firewalls, and so much as they're supposed to be doing for you, you know, most of your traffic or a significant amount of your traffic is just coming across as unclassified whatever. So you see it, you know it's coming from somewhere, but you don't really know what it is. And you have HR coming at you saying, hey, you know, is, is Billy doing this? And how much time is he spending on the web and all that stuff? And it's really, really hard to provide real intelligence on the accuracy of that with, you know, our traditional firewall models. So I'm going to show you how you can, uh, how we can help you clear that up, take that to the next level. Um, obviously, attacks are becoming more coordinated. You know, the requirements for uh, manual incident response is quite high. So how we're trying to change that is, again, we're trying to give you this ability to, you know, discover those unknown threats very quickly, you know, analyze them very quickly, and obviously respond very quickly. So we can all focus on, you know, the things that really matter. You know, we recognize that purchasing, you know, an anti-whatever solution, antivirus, anti-malware is a necessary product in today's day and age. No one's coming to work every day saying, gosh, I can't wait to spend my afternoon inside my AV console. You know, we recognize that. So we are trying to make that as simplistic as possible, but yet also provide you a more holistic endpoint tool that uh, gives you more of a, a full view of everything that's happening in that landscape. So it's a, it's more of a powerful tool, not just something that's checking a box for you and, you know, solving a compliance problem. So back in 2015, we kind of started this project as what we classified as Project Galileo at the time where we had determined it's like, okay, the only way that we can really take kind of that next gen firewall to the next level is to start taking these standalone components um, and bring them together. That way, instead of trying to create new engines constantly inside a firewall that may never be able to truly see what's going on, 
because, you know, the bad guys are doing the same thing. They're trying to stay hidden. So, you know, everything's simulating a browser. Everything's a plug-in. Everything's looking like something that it isn't necessarily by the time that traffic gets to your firewall. You know, you're routing it through your network and, you know, you're losing your MAC addresses at layer three. So you can't see everything that you're hoping to. Well, bottom line, by bringing the two together, you get significantly more visibility. So, and it's more than that. So with this security heartbeat between them, I mean, you have your XG firewall, you have central as your management platform hosted, you have intercept X and our traditional endpoint layering together. So that relationship is the bottom line, they start to talk. So now we see by default, everything that's flowing through it. And I get a little bit more into that as we go through, but it's more than just that, you know, that security heartbeat is doing more for you because we have that relationship we can get into that automated incident response capabilities we see it we can isolate it or limit the network access for compromised systems you know while we're going through the process of cleaning it up part of that is we get real-time insight and control inside central of what's going on with what's going on between these two sides of your network so as you're in you're looking at your console you're paying attention that's sitting in a tab in your environment for your browser, you see this stuff as it becomes, you know, actionable. Um, automated key removal. This is something that we're doing a lot with safeguard encryption buried inside Sophos Central, where we're helping you manage BitLocker and File Vault directly. So we can go as far as to remove those encryption keys to truly eliminate, you know, the impact of a data breach incident. So, and again, we're trying to build a tool for you that's actually helpful. So Sophos Clean, automatically removes malware and returns the system to its original state. If you guys remember a product called Hitman Pro, we had acquired them. You know, they were probably, I'd say, oh, Malwarebytes, biggest competitor in that space. So we acquired them, brought them in, built the engine out, made it better, and that's providing an automated response engine behind the scenes for you. Instead of you know, something just popping up saying, hey, you know, manual cleanup required or go do this or look at that. You know, we are really trying to do our best to help deal with those incidents as they pop up dynamically for you. And I'll get into a little bit more of, you know, how we do that as we go through. So, and again, through this relationship between uh, security heartbeat, we get that actionable intel. So it's like, all right, well, what are these applications that are pot potentially running in my environment, you know, that network visibility that, you know, is so key to, you know, being able to really understand what's traversing our environments. So we've seen a tremendous amount of growth in this area. Um, people are really, really loving what we're doing. So, you know, a couple of examples of those is kind of how it scales. Um, we have, we have organizations that are well into thousands and thousands of endpoints, you know, using exactly this to stop traffic across, you know, regions or many, many satellite offices along the way. Just an example of what would be showing up in there, they get actionable intel, they solve the problem, problem goes away. Small environments, lots of firewalls, lots of branches, very, very diverse environments, bringing all of that together, where again, you're looking at a central server dashboard and you can see all of that intel as it's flowing across your different regions. Um, large firewall sites, lots of computers, um, even you know, in this case, 350 to 400 different sites, each with just five to six endpoints. That's huge to be able to bring all that together and understand what's really happening across the landscape that broad. So, and again, we scale pretty large. So anyway, so I guess kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of the topic today, you know, I mean, who likes extortion, right? You know, I mean, one of the biggest issues that we are facing in our climate anymore is ransomware, you know. So how do we minimize the impact of ransomware? Because once it's kind of done its damage anymore, it's, well, you're kind of stuck. It's, it's just the reality of it. I mean, you can't really put it back together without restoring data, restoring VMs. Um, paying the ransom in a lot of cases, we're seeing a tremendous amount of SAM SAM ramware, ransomware, which is becoming very, very targeted. You know, healthcare, larger industry, it's just easier to pay that amount. And those amounts are substantial. I mean, you know, we've seen a number of uh, hospitals and stuff in 
Northern Ohio just in the past six months that were running legacy infrastructures that, you know, they were, they had some substantial payouts that they had to deal with. I mean, you can, you can look that stuff up yourself. Most of it's public now, but you know, a number of those places are uh, now using our solution where we've ripped out Cisco and Cisco AMP and, you know, other products that you would consider to be, you know, maybe should be the top of the food chain. Um, or we've been able to provide, you know, a significant better value and a solution set at a substantially reduced cost as well. So um, all of those are always uh, good answers. So the first component as in this relationship with synchronized security is Intercept X. And this is our next generation endpoint. And a little bit of history of what Intercept X is, is Invincia, the organization that we acquired in 2017, Bottom line, back around 2009, DARPA, the Defense Department, went out for bid for a solution that could basically almost look at the DNA of malware and make a determination from a behavior perspective on whether or not it's malicious or benign. And circle back around and continuously monitor those applications as well. So Invincia won that contract they developed a relationship with Sophos and Sophos Labs. Us being around as long as we had been, you know, we, uh, we, had, we fed them initially, I think, well over 100 million initial samples to start to train their model, train their deep learning, um, machine learning engine. And, you know, that relationship continued to blossom. Everybody liked to party together, whatever, you know, and we bought them. So that was the core of IntercepteX and is, you know, now completely embedded into most of our next generation products. Just a little bit of landscape that we're seeing out there. Sophos Labs sees well over 400,000 previously unseen files on a daily basis. This is stuff we'll probably never see again. We won't see it tomorrow. 400,000 unique samples. Trying to stay up with that is, uh, well, it's just basically next to impossible. You know, between that type of volume and, you know, other samples of, you know, 30,000 different malicious ULLs daily, 80%, which are from legitimate websites. I mean, you can't block that stuff. I mean, you have to be able to pay attention to it as it's flowing through your environment. I mean, so, I mean, as we've seen that malware growth rate, you know, grow, I mean, you know, bottom line, these are my words, you know, good luck. I mean, you're not going to be able to sustain that type of, you know, catch rate with, you know, I would say that last generation endpoint, you know, signature based, Bayesian, heuristical stuff is very, very good at certain things. And it's not going away anytime soon, but it's not perfect at everything. And to develop a product that is able to catch up and stay caught up with every variation of every variation of everything out there, it's, it's just not possible. So you have to design an engine to layer on top of that that actually has the ability to truly look at the behavior of what files are. So and this is where we get into, you know, 2008, it's a buzzword of the year, right? Machine learning, artificial intelligence. Okay, well, you know, besides our the marketing noise, what does it really mean? You know, I like this slide. I mean, it, it simplifies it when you take machine learning or deep learning and look at it from an image recognition perspective. It's just basically this, you know, when you train something with enough samples of something, it becomes very, very smart at identifying the micro characteristics of what it is. And in this Sam example, is this a mop or is this one crazy looking dog? You know, I mean, how do you train a machine to see that? You just feed it massive amounts of Intel. Same thing with the parrot and the bowl of guacamole. You know, it's image recognition in this regard. So how do you take that same idea and apply it to, you know, how to identify malware? Again, it's the micro characteristics of that code that's being pushed through it. How does it compare to other samples we've seen? What does it look like? I mean, there's so many thousands and thousands, millions of variables that come into play when you're actually looking at that. How do you get that? A very, very well-trained engine. So, but what does that mean in reality? 
um, from a performance perspective. It blocks malware before it executes. That's the whole idea behind it. So it does not require signatures or rely on them at all. Um, I actually have some examples out there where the engine itself, you know, and I'll show you, I think a little bit as we go through the presentation, where we, Adobe just released a new zero day exploit, I think it was in July. We tested it against one of our intercept X endpoints in our lab that had not been updated since last September. Caught it immediately. Why? Because it's looking at that behavior. There's only so many different ways you can target a machine. Um, and if you become smart enough with that behavior, you know, it makes it easy to have that kind of catch rate. Um, extremely small footprint, averages somewhere between 17 to 20 meg with very infrequent updates, which is again, my example. You know, hadn't been updated since September. You know, we were still able to catch it without any issues. And as an example, a real world example of how often those updates actually happen, it's about, you know, every, let's say every four to five weeks, we are releasing a new updated model into our InterceptX engine that's deployed to you automatically. Again, the beauty of Central, you're not having to push it out to your clients or anything. We're doing it for you. So getting into this example, Cool, huh? Did everybody hear that? You know, uh, just give me a verbal. My screen, I can't see everyone's chat window. So give me a verbal that that actually came across. Yeah, ab absolutely, uh, Scott. It, it came across. We were dancing in the background. Hey, all right. Good, good. Well, I got one more for you here real quick, and, you know, then we'll uh, dive into a little bit more of the Intercept Act stuff. But, you know, just a little bit more of an example of what it's doing behind the scenes for you. So wonderful. Hi, I'm Doug from the product team here at Sophos, and today we're going to talk about how we protect against targeted attacks by active real-time hackers. Our Intercept X technology, which is found in our endpoint and server product lines, employs a variety of techniques to combat these types of attacks. So let's take a closer look at some of them now. Now a big one is credential theft. If an attacker is able to get a hold of a high-level admin's credentials, for instance, they're able to move across the network, they're able to access important files, and they're generally able to wreak havoc regardless of how well an organization is protected. The Intercept X credential theft protection prevents the theft of authentication passwords and hash information from memory and off the hard disk. Now there are dozens of tools available for doing this, a popular one being Mimikatz, but instead of targeting specific tools, Intercept X instead looks for unauthorized interactions with the LSAS runtime memory and the direct extraction of credential data from the hard disk. Now, this is great for our endpoint protection, and it's also extremely powerful on our server product, since that's where a lot of the juiciest credentials are stored. Now, imagine an attacker getting a hold of credentials for server or domain admins. It would be devastating. Another popular tactic is code caving. With this, attackers hide bad code, often a remote shell launcher, inside unused sections of otherwise legitimate applications. And these hijacked apps are either able to bypass traditional antivirus detection, or if caught, it could lead administrators to believe that they're false positives. So they're either ignored or exempted. Now to end users and administrators, the applications themselves work as expected, but the attacker has gained persistence on the devices. A number of code caving tools exist, and most traditional antivirus solutions simply look for telltale indicators or signatures that these tools leave behind. Intercept X, however, evaluates applications for code cave utilization upon initial execution, and if extraneous code is discovered, the application is terminated. Again, this is great protection for endpoints and extremely powerful for application servers where a code cave application might be inadvertently made available to users across the entire organization. So those are two really powerful and potentially devastating techniques that we protect against, credential theft and code caving. 
attackers need credentials to move across your network, especially if you've got anti-exploit and have fully patched your systems, and they want to get around your AV or backdoor a legitimate piece of software so they can maintain persistence. We also protect against other nasty advanced techniques such as malicious process migration, which is a common technique performed by an attacker when they first establish their presence on a device and want to move to another process to either escalate privileges or gain more enduring access. Process privilege escalation, which is a tactic used to elevate a low privilege process, often by assuming the authentication token of a user with higher privilege in order to gain system access rights. Abuse of application procedure calls, often referred to as atom bombing, which involves tricking a legitimate application or process into running malware or other code by hijacking calls to it. This was seen in the big WannaCry and NotPetya attacks of 2017. And then IntercepX provides comprehensive protection for the browser and the registry by preventing the malicious use of PowerShell and HTML applications, as well as preventing the replacement of application verifier DLLs, which can be used to circumvent antivirus and other normal process startup behavior. So those are just a handful of real-time hacking techniques that IntercepX is capable of protecting against across endpoints and servers. Don't forget that we've also got unbeatable deep learning malware detection, powerful anti-ransomware technology, fast and thorough cleanup, and easy to use root cause analysis on board as well. There's a, there's a lot of bells and whistles in the product, guys. And again, most of the heavy lifting is done for you. You know, as we kind of go through it, I mean, this is a, this is a slide I really like. I'll just kind of go through it quick because I know we only have so much time. But I mean, the idea is we're creating a layer defense with the AV engine automatically. So we're dealing with those known threats, that foundational component. We're giving you that new crypto guard engine, which is targeting ransomware specifically. We have that deep learning AI engine, which is actually looking at the behavior of everything unknown as it's actually happening in real time um, at that time of click. So that, you know, as, a, as things change, as different executables, you know, reach out to CNC servers to get their latest instruction sets, things that may have made it past your layered defense and came through as benign, you know, now are actually turned malicious. We actually see that when it happens. And again, you know, these uh, 25, 26 different known exploitable methodologies that are, you know, so popular in a Microsoft ecosystem. We're watching all of that behavior, which was uh, what that last video presentation was starting to demonstrate for you. So, you know, with this, I mean, again, we're trying to provide an engine that is doing so much of the heavy lifting for you. One thing that I really like is the rollback feature and part of our automated recovery when it comes to uh, encrypted files because kind of the nature of watching the behavior of the of of of, of an executable is you've got to be very careful about you know just stopping you know well your false positive rates i mean so you got to watch it you actually see what it's what it's doing so sometimes it actually has to run before you can get anything actionable on it so in the case of like a ransomware virus, you know, we see it, we identify it and say, okay, well, you know, that's not BitLocker, that's not this, that's not some third party tool that's uh, doing this on purpose. So we actually stop the process and roll back those files for you. And that's done directly out of memory. That's not reliant upon, you know, VSS shares or anything like that, which is one of the first things these types of malware try to target is, you know, shut down your ability to recover so um, we don't rely on that at all. So we roll back those files dynamically for you. So hopefully you're in a situation where you're not even dealing with the partial restore. So again, we've done our best to think this through. So a little bit of the attack, the, uh, the attack, the kill chain, you know, how everything flows through it. There's different layers with how this type of malware talks, um, but not so much to dig too much into this, but just kind of, how we're sitting on top of that. So all of these are different examples of the protect, the layered protection defense and kind of where they sit in that attack chain process. You know, what's happening at different aspects of as stuff's flowing through memory and trying to become something that's infecting your host. So this is that entire layered defense um, in each one of those engines. They're actionable and they operate at 
different levels. It's not just somewhere in between. It stops it there. If it gets beyond that, we don't know anything about it. So it's not like everything's active all the time. You know, I mean, we may crush it at once, one point and it never ever gets to our deep learning engine because it may not need to. And that's also part of the efficiency of that engine. Um, it's only running basically as it needs to. And this is something I'm hoping to touch on a little bit, you know, if we still have time, is RCA or root cause analysis or threat cases as they're being, you know, reclassified to. You know, what that means and how that provides you, you know, more actionable intel on where something came from. And this is just an example of, you know, the, uh, the 26 different, you know, exploitable methodologies that are kind of popular in a uh, Windows landscape. You know, we are targeting all of these dynamically for you. And as new methodologies come about, you know, we're uh, bringing those in as well. So what root cause analysis is, or threat cases, is it's a tool that's built into the product. So you, you have an incident in the environment, you clean it up, you think you did, you know, whatever, whatever, right? You know, there's always that, that thought in the back of your mind. It's like, well, where did it come from? You know, did, you know, this user that claims they didn't do anything actually do something? Yes, they did. Which machine was it originally found on? Um, so what we're providing you in here, and this has actually evolved. I mean, it's a lot prettier at this point, but this root cause analysis, what was the core process? What happened? And what was my beacon event? What was it? Was it Outlook? Was it a WinZip utility? Where did it come from? And what all did it try to reach out to? So my favorite that I can't show you on the slide, but I can show you in the presentations like network connections. I always want to see it's like, all right, well, I mean, was it just making CNC calls out to the mothership to, you know, get the latest ugly iteration of itself? Or was it making deposits on my primary network share for everybody and their brother to ruin my life with tomorrow when they come in and start clicking on something, right? So now you have something that's actionable that you can actually see what's going on. And I'll touch on this a little bit deeper as we go through, but it's going to show you what it was. And I can see what it's doing. Did it actually do any damage? Do I need to go investigate something else? This is huge. So instead of just a something you have to have, we're providing you a tool that actually provides you a lot more value as it goes through. So, and again, you know, Sophos clean, the idea automated, automatic, you know, we're cleaning it up dynamically if we can. We're telling you, hey, we've solved this threat. We've stopped it. We're starting this process. And then we're reporting back saying, hey, you know, this has been cleaned up. Nothing for you to do. Kind of nice, huh? So, again, people like the product. I mean, it is very strong out there. So, we're very, very proud of it right now. So, um, does anybody need me to pause right now before I dive into you know, just a quick overview of the other component that kind of brings this together and why this matters. Can we dive into XG Firewall a little bit? All right, I'll, I'll take that as a yes. So, I mean, uh, you know, this is our firewall, right? Marketing, you know, big tough cop, the shotgun, whatever extra rounds on the side, you know, he's constantly paying attention, everything's happening, right? Where in reality, our firewalls, let's be honest, are a little bit like this. And they're kind of what, that way by design a little bit. You know, you spin them up, you have to create a nice balance between, you know, keeping the organization running and hopefully catching something that matters, right? And it's always tough. Because at the end of the day, in reality, we would just all like to go home. You know, see our kids, football game, spend some time with the wife, not work next weekend, hopefully. So again, the goal is to provide you tools that will help do more of that for you. So when you bring this together, I'm gaining more of that visibility. I've got that actionable intel and you know, I can respond to it. I mean, that's horrible. Seven days, yeah. you know, how do we do this better? Uh, I say a lot that we don't necessarily need more tools, but we need better tools. We need our tools to talk together, work together, you know, provide something besides the to bear essentials or check a compliance box. So that's where SOFO Central is providing you that landscape to do all that. So what we've done is we're taking our wireless solution, you know, our email solution, our next gen firewall XG, um, you know, our mobile products and our next gen endpoint, and they're all talking. 
So now anything that's happening on one landscape, using as an example, a mobile device, which we have a full MDM UEM product, talking to wireless, sharing Intel, you know, running the endpoint, talking to our firewall, we see it all. And you don't necessarily need all these components to get that, but that's the picture that we're building as we do this. And here's what I'm talking about with synchronized app control. When I was bringing up SSL earlier, you know, having to deploy certs to SSL browsers, all that stuff, and yeah, that's viable. And there's reasons you wanna do that. But there are also a lot of examples where you don't necessarily need it. You just need to know what's happening in your ecosystem. So here's what you get. When you pair that endpoint that is aware of everything that's happening on your endpoint with a firewall that it can actually talk to, a enterprise grade piece of equipment that's providing all of that other threat architecture for you. When they start sharing data, I legitimately go from here to here because I can deliver all of those applications or those um, cloud applications, Dropbox, Salesforce, Evernote, all that junk that's running behind the scenes that you may not necessarily know because it's hiding itself in something else, I can see it. So now I can make a decision on how I want to classify that stuff. Do I want to allow it? Do I want to block it? Do I want to uh, bandwidth limit it? Um, do I want to pay attention to it? You know, so you get that dynamically because I share Intel from both sides. I don't necessarily have to tear everything apart and put it back together in order to see that. So again, you know, a couple of uh, crowd slides, people like us, you know, front dashboard of the XG firewall, you know, just some of the core visibility that you're getting into it, you know, and I see that heartbeat between my, my devices and everything that I'm getting out of it. So skip a few of these that don't so much matter. Yes, we're good at what we do. But you know, a little bit more of the Intel, I can see all my cloud applications and how much traffic is being generated can see everything that's happening and I can dive down into it. You know, which network, which devices are connected to my network and one's potentially causing problems, all right from the dashboard. So, so it makes a very, very clean interface with a very straightforward foundational way of configuring a firewall. You know, this flow should look familiar to anybody that spent any time inside of a firewall. Everything's pretty much where it needs to be but yet I get all kinds of actionable, actionable intel, you know, without having to witch hunt my environment for everything. So I have my cloud application, so I could see Dropbox, I could see who's using it. You know, maybe you guys have a, you know, a corporate account for Box or OneDrive. Well, you know, why is Joe running Dropbox all the time? You know, that's a potential indication that, you know, maybe Joe's uh, piping data off the network that he may not, necessarily be supposed to. So we give all of this to you very easily. What did we have to do to do this? Connect the two together. You know, go to XG Firewall, log into Central, we start sharing Intel. I didn't have to tear anything apart, put it back together in order to see that. I see endpoints that have gone hot. So what do I want to do with it? Do I want to do I want to build policies that basically say, hey, this thing turns red, we immediately start shutting it down. You can do that now dynamically. Um, synchronized application control. This is what I'm talking about, where I have all that visibility into stuff that's running on hosts that I would not have known before that may be showing up as browsers or unknown or unclassified traffic. Now I get to see it all. Um, who are those users doing what? Where are they going? You know, what is that sandstorm or sandbox activity look like? Again, very, very easy to see. So, and of course, you know, my reports, I can dive down in. Uh, we're one of the only products out there that has extremely robust onboard, on-box reporting. You can take this to the next level with several add-ons, but no, right out of the box, we don't require you, hey, you know, buy this big, hefty, you know, logging and analytics platform that, you know, may not work well in your environment or may not be a good fit or whatever. We're giving you all kinds of intel directly on the box, and it's good stuff, too. So um, Sandstorm, you guys know what sandboxing is. And if you don't, bottom line, what sandboxing is, is uh, we call it Sandstorm. But, you know, through your email appliance, through your web gateway, through your XG firewall, if the solution cannot determine, you know, what an executable may be or if it's 
benign or malicious, we will uphill it to our sandbox, which is dynamic, spins up, spins up a VM behind the scenes, detonates it there, and then determines the fallout or if there is any. So again, that's that layered defense approach. You know, how do we give you more actionable intel immediately? And how do we protect your network without you having to sit there for 24 hours a day babysitting everything that's going through it or with 14 different third parties doing it all? We do so much of this directly on the box. Um, our firewall email component even acts as a real MTA where we can actually do that transport between your exchange server, or Office 365, or lots of different ways to solve your email problem, including a full-blown email engine inside of Central, which I can get into, which is a component of Central. So I always get that question. It's like, okay, well, this is cool, but you know, I just renewed my firewalls, whatever, whatever. I like them. They solve all my VPN problems. They're not going to go away anytime soon. Don't need to. Yes, it sits as a traditional model, but we also do a tremendous amount of inline or this firewall sitting open to fail open ports on here where all the traffic's just flowing through it. We're investigating it and we're reporting on it, providing you everything you would get minus the natting and routing that you're probably doing over here. Um, a fourth option is you can throw up another egress point on your network, which I'm seeing a lot more in larger, larger enterprise where, you know, they're, uh, they're just not getting, you know, the Intel out of um, maybe their Cisco infrastructure, but they've got 4,000 VPN tunnels running on it. It's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. They need a better solution. So now they're starting to migrate their users to another outbound firewall that is uh, much more specifically targeting that need. So anyway, uh, guys, that's, that's my long winded spiel. Um, I think we're out of time. Um, I, can show a lot more if people have time to get into that or if you want to. It's entirely up to you guys. Hey, Scott, this is, uh, this is Integrated IT Group. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I think what we're going to do since we're coming up on the top of the hour and being mindful of time, just a lot of rich content that was presented there. So thank you very much for doing that. Uh, we do have some questions that came through in the chat mm -hmm. um, and also in the Q&A. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go off and, and fire off um, some of these questions that uh, that came in. I'm looking for my my chat. In any case, um, kind of the first question that that came in, and it's a duel between probably um, yourselves and maybe more directed Integrated IT Group. But how does Integrated IT Group and Sophos uh, work together? How does this all work together? Um, in in a relationship, well, guys, there's a, a number of ways to that relationship works. You know, number one, Sophos is we're a manufacturer. You know, we do everything through a partner, such as Integrated IT. So you know, you have to you buy everything through one of our partners, and you know they have the option to provide professional services, or that's something we can also um, handle directly but that's all still done through a partner of your choice. So, I mean, there's a, there's a number of ways to do that. So um, we can be completely transparent behind the scenes. We can be there holding everyone's hands along the way. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. You hit the nail on the head. Um, as far as what we do uh, and what sets us apart from, from some of the other uh, partners is that we do have, we do have some, some really tight relationships with Sophos and, you know, as we work on customer solutions, if we're not 100% sure, we don't still just, you know, shoot for it and, and kind of wing it. Uh, we, we work really close with them and make sure that, you know, their engineers and our engineers are on the same page, that the customer understands the solution that we're implementing and that it, it goes off without a hitch. So, agreed. Great. We had, um, we had another question that, that came through uh, in the chat, and I'm just trying to find it now. I, it has to do with with uh, the firewalls that you had mentioned, Scott. Mm -hmm. Maybe going a little bit deeper into. Um, let me see if I can find that. If you want to go ahead and pose that question again um, into the chat, that would be great. It I think it was Justin. 
that asked that question and it kind of dropped off. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it now. Uh, if there's any other questions, though, you can certainly go ahead and register them uh, into the chat or into the Q and A, and we'll be sure that we get to them. Once again, thank you, Integrated IT Group and Sophos, uh, for coming together, and thank you, thank a big thank you to all of you for dropping by uh, this webinar today. Do all the XG firewalls support this? do all of the XG firewalls support this technology? So kind of a question on XG firewalls supporting the, the intercept, X. <clears throat> intercept X. Yes, they, they, they do. That's part of the core code. Kim, you size the XG firewall applicable to the environment. You have Sophos Central running behind the scenes that's handling your AV and any other component that you may have licensed in here but you're simply going to your XG firewall. You're going down to synchronized security here. You're linking it. You're just basically logging it into your Sophos um, central account. You're picking the zones and stuff that you kind of want to pay attention to, and that's it. So now I watch all that as, as it's flowing through. And with central being that overlay platform between both, you know, it's on all the time. So you know, host doesn't necessarily have to be tied into directly to the XG firewall in order for me to have more visibility into it because that's being fed also through central. So, you know, there's ways to start bringing them together even for hosts that aren't necessarily on premise as well. So that's evolving. Great. Um, any other questions? Uh, I need an upgrade to my firewall then. Justin, we'll make sure that the, the good folks at Integrated IT Group, uh, Doug, gets gets back with you on, on needing to upgrade the firewall conversation. Uh, anyone else has a question, we'll go ahead and take a few more minutes to make sure that we address them during today's webinar. Otherwise, um, if I don't see anything here, uh, once again, on behalf of Integrated IT Group and Sophos, we really appreciate you all dropping by today. Uh, for this webinar, we've got some exciting news that's that that is coming up that we'd like to tease here for just a moment. Uh, we'll be working with Sophos on uh, on going a little bit deeper into a webinar series uh, as we talked at kind of a high level with some of the IT security and the, and the four challenges that you're faced with. We're going to break those out into individual uh, webinars. If there's anything that you'd like to see specifically, please make sure that you go ahead. Um, again, you can put that in the chat or else you could respond once uh, once you get the, the post follow-up. Uh, we also have an event uh, that's going to be coming up in October that's going to be an in-person event. Um, we're shooting for October 17th. Is that correct, Brandon? October 17th, you want to save the date. Uh, we'll give you some notification, but it's going to be an in-person uh, event we're able to get together um, and, and just going to kind of get that on your radar now. In any case, um, closing remarks, I'd like to pass things over to, to Doug Holbert once again from Integrated IT Group to close out the webinar, and thanks again. Hey, thanks, everyone. Um, so if anyone has any questions as far as, you know, more in detail, uh, specific to your environment, if you already have a Sophos product and you have more questions, um, if there's something, you know, maybe right now is not the time and it's not really a group question, you want to have a more involved conversation, by all means, you know, let us know. Um, give us feedback on, on the webinar in general uh, as well. You know, did, did we touch on the points that you expected? Did you get the, the information that you were looking for? And if you need more specific information or other information, um, obviously let us know and, and we can either set up a one-on-one -on -one or, you know, if there's enough of, of a demand for it or if we didn't, you know, touch on certain topics that you guys expected, you know, we can, we can touch on those as well in, in another maybe smaller group session. So uh, again, thanks, thanks everyone for, for joining us. Um, hopefully this, this helps and it was informational for you. Uh, and that's it, I, I think we're good. Great, this commences our webinar for today. Thanks again for joining us. Take care. Hey everyone, thank you.